Has Christianity always been one of the religions in the world to you? Oh, hallelujah. Christianity is not a religion. Neither is it a joining of a church and doing the Christian things like praying and giving and so on. Hallelujah. Christianity is the outworking of God's own kind of life received into the spirit of a man. Whoa! This divine life in the heart of a man makes him righteous, keeps him healthy, divinely guarded in life, prosperous and victorious. It gives you the ability to enjoy intimate fellowship with the Father and have dominion on this earth. Hallelujah! This is what awaits you if you will wholeheartedly believe that Jesus is the Son of God raised from the dead and personally confess him as the Lord of your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Join Dr. David Bindon on the Good Life Devotion every Monday to Friday on this channel and receive truth that will usher you into the Good Life experience. Wow, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's such a joy once again to welcome you to your favorite Good Life Devotion. This is your center for biblically authoritative teachings. The Gulai devotion is God's center for daily dose of rightly divided truth that he sent forth to the nations of the world as his voice in these last days of the church on the earth to ripen the church for the coming of Jesus and to effect the greatest soul harvest on the earth like never before. The Gulai devotion, apart from being on many platforms in the West African sub region, it's not anywhere at any time. You can get it on YouTube or you can watch it also by downloading the Fazal TV app and watch it at the stated times anywhere. And your life will never be the same. We have been announcing to you and then we started. We are now live also on the Metro TV network. For those who are late evening watchers, 10 p.m. every day, Monday to Sunday, apart from the usual Monday to uh, Friday, we have a special weekend package for our viewers on Metro TV. If you don't, if you're not in Ghana, you can watch Metro TV on um, DSTV at the stated times in your country. So don't forget, we are going to have a special package of the Glad Devotion on Saturday, and you can't miss that package. Your life will never be the same. We have been dealing with the subject of Living a holy life. That's a series we're looking at this week. And our first discussion was on the fact that God calls you righteous. And I'm talking about your nature. We've not yet talked about your works. A lot of people don't mind you say, you are righteous. They say, mm, I'm not righteous. Do you know how sinful I am? Oh, I mean, I don't want to pretend. No, we are not talking about your works yet. Let's face some fundamental structural issues first. You see, if you look at a building and because it is painted red on the outside, you don't know whether what's inside is bricks or block. You can't tell the real quality of the building by looking at the outside furnishing. If you want to know what the building really is, ask about what it is built with. So you can't talk about a subject or deal with the issues of righteous works until you first solve the matter of are you righteous in nature? This is what it takes to understand the subject of righteousness. So if you have been trying to, and uh, you have some social media knowledge about righteousness, and you don't know about righteous nature, you haven't begun on that path yet. Make sure you go back after this episode and watch that episode and understand why God declares you righteous. We are going to move forward, and uh, today our topic is Holiness. Remember, we're talking about living a holy life. Holiness. And I want to share the word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the truth that is permeating every fiber of our being. We are definitely moving to the dimensions of living holy lives. Now, till we meet you in the air. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Wow, so holiness. And our message today is 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15 into 16. And it says that, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy.
holy. Simple, isn't it? Yeah. But as he which called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, in every aspect of life. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. I'm talking about holiness. Again, I'm going to try to break this subject down into about three major parts so that we can have a better grasp of the subject. The first part I want to look at is that as a child of God, you must learn to walk in spiritual truth or spiritual reality. You see, there are realities in the physical and there are also realities in the spirit. Reality is truth. So, as a child of God, if you don't learn to walk in the truth, you are never in reality. And you will never enjoy the extent of liberty and glorious living that's available for you. That is what the Bible said, that ye shall know the truth. You shall know the reality. <laughs> and the reality shall make you free. With all thy getting, Learn and try to walk in reality. Why? Number one, it is the Father's desire for you to walk in truth, to walk in reality. It's the Father's desire. It is the will of God our Father that every one of his children walks in truth. So if you are a son of God, a daughter of God, and you are not walking in truth, you are not walking in the will of God for your life. Let's go take our Bibles to a few scriptures. We're going to read the King James Version and at this point in time. We're going to take 3 John, book of 3 John. It's just one chapter. So we're looking at verse 4. And it says that, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. This is God talking. God says that if you ever want to bring pleasure to my heart, among all the things you could ever do on the earth, the one that brings me the greatest joy is to hear, is to observe that my children are walking in truth. Oh boy, oh boy. So you want to please God, look for the truth of God's word and walk in it. This is the pleasure of the Father for you. question is, in your life, your marriage, business, work, ministry, can you say, I'm walking in truth? That's what can tell whether your life is pleasing God or not. Not necessarily some of the outside things you're thinking about. So you must walk in truth because it is a pleasure of the Father. Number two, is the understanding of the word. That is truth. Truth according to God is not some scientific fact somewhere or economic fact somewhere or uh, family fact, social fact. No. There's a difference between fact and truth. And when it comes to God, truth or reality is the truth or reality according to his word. Let's quickly go to John chapter 17. The 17th verse. And it says... It says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So before God, nothing is truth if it is not in line with his word. So if you're asking, should I do this or shouldn't I do this? Ask yourself, is it in line with the word or not in line with the word? Then you know what to do. If it is in line with the word, you are in truth. If it is not in line with with the word, forget about who is saying what. It's not in truth. It's not in reality before God. And if you take that path, you are going to walk to destruction because it's a path outside of God. So, walk in spiritual reality, one, because it's the Father's desire for you, two, because it's the understanding of the word. So, to be able to walk in truth before God means that you must have understanding of God's word. There's a reason why I'm giving you this background. We're talking about holiness. Then number three, Without understanding the truth of the word about a subject, you will live far below the expectation of God because of ignorance. So if you don't understand the truth of God's word, 
You will live far below God's expectation for you in that area of life. And then this brings us to the subject of holiness and other important subjects in the Bible. Any subject of the Bible that you don't take time to understand it from the reality of God's word, you are going to live below God's standard for you in that area. That is why on the Good Life Devotion, for every subject, we first try to define for you what the Bible says about the subject. So for a subject like holiness, I'm going to begin to show you from the Bible what is the meaning of holiness. Not what your grandfather told you, not what somebody said on social media, not what you actually think. think. You know, there are a lot of things that people grew up picking up from the society and they thought those are truths. Meanwhile, those were just people's own interpretations on their own. Some of them came from um, um, like ancient theories of men and myths that have nothing to do with biblical understanding. So when I was teaching on the subject of righteousness in that book, I took time, the, uh, that the book Master of a Sin, I took time to teach on what righteousness is. It's the same thing I'm doing here now about holiness. Because if you don't have understanding about what holiness is, what are you going to live? And this is the mistake many have made. They wouldn't take that to understand, okay, if the Bible says holy, what does the Bible mean? They get up and then in their minds, oh, they think they know. Holy means, oh, you are not touching anything. And that's all they know about holiness. And that's not going to work because that's not all there is to holiness. And actually, it's amazing that the devil programs things like that. The most important aspect of the subject is covered. It is the ex external resource of the subject that people take off on. Like the subject of righteousness. A lot of people like to focus on the works aspect. And yet, it is the nature that drives the works. And so, until they humble themselves to listen to a true teacher who will show them from nature, okay, to how it functions through to works, they will never get to understand. And when they stay only at works, they can live a righteous life, even though they may be righteous on the inside. So, I'm going to go on a short break, and when I come back, I believe you take your pen and your notebooks and get set now for us to look at the technical meaning of holiness according to God's word. And when we get that, when we start talking about living a holy life, you know how things mixed up in your minds. So I'll be right back after this short break. Don't go away. or what is properly called being born again. It's not just a following of divinity. It is a having of the life of divinity in you. Christians are not just followers of Christ. They are harvests of the life of Christ. You can follow me and not have anything from me. You just follow me about. But we are not just following Jesus. We God is life in us. Join the Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bindon on this channel to receive biblically authoritative teachers which will usher you into exhibiting the divine life here on earth. The Good Life Devotion shows every Monday to Friday from 10 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. and 11 to 11.30 p.m. on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Don't miss the special weekend edition on Saturdays and Sundays at 10 p.m. Life is good. Enjoy. Wow, praise the Lord. So we're looking at the topic holiness. And we made a point that as a child of God, you should walk in the truth, the truth in the understanding of God's word. Concerning any subject, you must have a clear understanding of what the Bible teaches on that subject. Now, when we talk about holiness, before you take off into looking at works of holiness, first ask yourself, in the Bible, what is the meaning of holiness? And that's what I'm going to show you. So according to the scriptures, even if you take out the scripture, you look at the scripture that we read today, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15 to 16, which says that, but 
as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. According to the scriptures, to be holy, as used in the scripture above, has three meanings. If you look at it from the Greek language from which it has been translated in the New Testament. And each meaning is used in a different way. So now, if you see holy in the Bible, let's say, even if you limit to the New Testament, you cannot conclude that everywhere it means the same thing. You must know that if I see holy, it means one of these three things. Then you look at the context in which it was used. Then that will tell you that in this place, this is the meaning of holiness he was talking about. And in that place, that was the meaning of the holiness he was talking about. If you don't know this, everywhere you see holy, you think it's the same thing, and it is not. So, by the grace of God, we are blessed to have these details here. According to what we have in the Greek language, to be holy, as I said, has a three-dimensional meaning. The first one is from the Greek word hosios. H-O-S-I-O-S, -O -S, Hosios. And it means to be right by divine nature. So it's like, not because you've done anything, but by reason of nature, you are right. And this refers to the pure state of the divine life that the born again receives. So if you bring it to the born again, by receiving the life of God, which is pure and right by nature, then the born again can be said to be holy because the born again has that innate nature that is holy, hosios. That is the way it is used in Acts chapter 2, verse 27. So if you, a typical usage is in Acts chapter 2. Verse 27, let's take a look at it. Acts 2, 27 says that, talking about Jesus, he said, because thou will not leave my soul in hell. He was quoting the psalmist about the Messiah. Because thou will not leave my soul in hell, neither will thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. And the Greek word is hosius. In other words, one who is holy, right by nature. Are you following this? Number two meaning of holy is hagios. So we have hosios, we have hagios. And hagios is H-A-G-I-O-S. And it means to be physically pure or morally blameless. To be physically pure or morally blameless. This is the only kind of holiness many people know. But it's only an aspect, it's only one of the meanings of being holy. Of course, it is a meaning of being holy, which must never be downplayed. But the point is, if you don't know Hosius, you can never manifest Hagios. So if you focus on Hagios, Hagios, and you're, you don't know anything about Hosius, you will struggle. It is being right in divine nature that produces moral blamelessness. The typical example is where we read today in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15, where it says that, but as he which has called you is morally blameless, hagios, so be ye hagios in all manner of conversation. In other words, in everything you do, be physically pure, be morally blameless. That's the second meaning of holy. Uh, holy. Then the third meaning of holy is from the Greek word herios. H-I-E-R-O-S. Herios. And it means to be sacred by reason of a formal consecration. And I, I will explain that. To be sacred by reason of a formal consecration. So um, this usage refers both to people or 
things, anything that has been formally consecrated to God's use is described as holy. You see, so a priest was said to be holy. Why? He's been consecrated to God's usage. Things in the house of God are declared as holy. Why? They were dedicated to God's usage. So they are herios. A typical usage is in 1 Corinthians chapter um, 9, and we are going to look at the 13th verse. It says that, Do ye not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple, and they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar? So what I'm talking about, those, which, those who minister about holy things, you're talking about those who minister in the house of God. For the things in the house of God were holy. This, these things are heroes. They were not typically even humans or beings. They were things like the cups in the house of God, the, the table of showbread, those things. So if you see holy in the Bible, it means one of these three things. Either it is talking about someone being sacred because of a formal consecration. So he says he is holy. Or someone who is physically pure, morally blameless. Or someone who is right by divine nature. These are the three dimensions or three dimensional meaning of the word holy. Once in a while, I like to go into subject like this and show you the meaning so that when I start talking about how to be holy or to live a holy life, you can understand it from the st structural perspective that produces the external results. There is no one that can be morally blameless who doesn't have the pure divine nature. And there is no one who can major on living a holy life who has not majored on the, the holy divine nature. These are so important for you to grasp. We concluded by saying here that these three meanings are true of the born again. This is where the meat of the matter is. So the born again, because he has received or his, his um, eternal life, which is the nature of God, the, the, the right divine nature of God in his spirit, because of that, about the, the born again, he is holy. He is hosios. So the born again can say, I am holy. Why? I'm the nature of God. And he hasn't come to acts of holiness yet. He hasn't come to being consecrated yet. He's just talking about the fact that he has this nature. In fact, his nature is that nature of holiness. Then the born again is consecrated into the office of a son of God. He's born into it. Being a son of God is a divine consecration. In those early days, priests were anointed and separated into an office. In fact, anointing simply means consecration to an office. So as a son of God, you are an anointed person. Why? You've been consecrated into the office of a son of God. And in that office alone, you are, a, you are, you are holy in the sense that you are dedicated to God. Now, the born again is expected to live physically, a, a physically pure life, to be morally blameless by reason of his nature. So the born again is holy also if he knows who he is in nature and puts it to work in terms of being morally blameless. So these three things are true of the born again. And so the born again can be said to be holy. Why? His nature is holy. He's been consecrated by reason of being born a son of God unto God. And if he takes advantage of these two, he can live a morally upright, morally blameless life. If you catch this, then you are set to follow me in the following episodes as I take you on a journey to show you uh, concerning the fact that you can live a holy life and show you the steps that you can take to live a holy life. So understand what is holiness. Holiness means a nature that is right by divine nature. Holiness means 
a nature that is right by its divine nature. Holiness means being physically pure or morally blameless. In other words, not being involved in unclean things. And the ho a holiness also means to be consecrated, to be sacred because of a consecration to God. So when you see holy in the Bible, find out in this place, was he talking about that right divine nature? Was he talking about a state of not meddling with unclean things? Or was he talking about a state of having been consecrated to God? Then you can find out the meaning of holy in any place in the Bible that it is used. Are you set? Do you understand this? Well, I begin to bless God, lift your hands and thank God for the knowledge of the truth and for preparing your heart for what we are about to eat next. Begin to bless him. Father, we thank you for the impartation of truth and of knowledge of the word of God. We celebrate it because not only have we received truth, but by these words we have been sanctified. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have been watching me and you have not yet received Jesus, this is the right place to receive Jesus. Jesus came to reconcile mankind to God through his death. And when he rose again from the dead, by the impartation of the fullness of the life of God, he now imparts that life to anyone who believes in him. So if you believe he died and rose again, and you declare him as Lord, you will receive this life of God that will make you holy in nature, righteous in nature, and a son of God. If you want to do that, say this after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, with all my heart I believe that by your resurrection from the dead, you made eternal life available. I receive this life into my spirit by saying, Jesus is Lord. If you have done this, you've been regenerated and renewed by the Holy Ghost. You are a new creature. What you need to do is follow the Gula devotion daily to receive truth by which you can grow and get planted in a Bible teaching and practice in church so that you can remain in Christ till he comes because Jesus is going to come soon. I'm surely going to meet you on our next episode the next day. But till then, life is good. Enjoy. Thank you for joining today's episode of your favorite Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bender. The Good Life Devotion is proudly brought to you by friends and partners of the Final Global Movement. For more information on how to become a partner, call us on 055 792-7744 or log on to our website finalglobalmovement.org Become a partner today and contribute to the global spread of God's message for the now. Follow us on our various social media handles and you will be blessed. Don't miss the Good Life Devotion on the channels displayed on your screen at the scheduled times. Till we come your way with the next episode of the Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bender. Life is good. Enjoy.